Summary of Gorgias by Plato Socrates, Caraphon, and Callicles are discussing Gorgias' speech outside a public building. Socrates missed the lecture, but he wants to talk to Gorgias in person. His friends set up a meeting between the two of them. Socrates wants to know, in particular, what Gorgias' skill does. Gorgias says that he is an orator and that he is an orator. He says that the goal of oratory is to give talks, especially speeches that convince people in public. Socrates wants more details, so Gorgias tells him that talks about oratory are about what's right and wrong. Socrates also tries to get him to tell the difference between knowledge and argument. Gorgias agrees that orators don't teach about what's right and wrong, but rather how to convince. In other words, public speakers don't have to know a lot about the subject they're talking about, they just have to make it seem like they do. Gorgias also says that orators shouldn't be blamed if their students use their oratory skills in an unfair way, just like a boxing teacher wouldn't be blamed if his student struck people for no reason. Socrates wants to know if it's true that someone who knows about a certain subject is the kind of person that knowledge makes them. For example, someone who knows what is right and wrong would be a righteous person. Socrates says that Gorgias is being illogical when he agrees. After all, if oratory is about doing what's right, which makes its practitioners right, then an orator wouldn't use his skills in an unfair way, like Gorgias did in his earlier case. At this point, Polis, a young orator, jumps in and says that Socrates is being rude and wants to know what kind of skill Socrates thinks oratory is. Socrates says that he doesn't think oratory is an art at all. Instead, he thinks it's just a skill that makes people happy. Also, it's a sort of flattery. Public speakers flatter their listeners in the same way that bakers make their customers happy. Socrates thinks that there are skills that deal with both the body and the soul, such as health for the body and justice for the soul. Flattery looks like a skill and acts like it cares about people, but it really just wants to give people what makes them feel good at the moment. A skill also has knowledge about its subject, which lets it work for the long-term good of that topic. A knack, on the other hand, doesn't need such knowledge. When asked to reply, Polis says that orators are admirable because, like rulers, they have the most power in a city. After all, they can send people away or have them killed. Socrates says this isn't true because rulers don't actually do what they want to do. Adding to this, he says that we want what's good and do things for the greater good, like taking a medicine we don't like because it's good for us. If an orator or ruler kills someone unfairly, not for the greater good, but thinks it's a good thing to do, is he really doing what he wants? Polis says that he knows he's not. Socrates adds to this point by saying that doing something unfair is worse than having something unfair happen to you. Polis thinks that people who do wrong should be punished, but he says that many have not been punished and are happy because of this. Socrates says that an unfair person can't be happy if he doesn't have to deal with the results of his actions. After all, justice is a form of discipline that cleans the mind of the bad things that come from being unfair. So, the person whose soul is free of evil is happier than the person who has gotten away with it. Socrates says that oratory is useless if it doesn't convince the wicked to face punishment for the good of the soul. Callicles speaks up and says that Socrates is just trying to please the crowd. Also, he doesn't agree with Socrates' ideas about what's right and wrong. He thinks that most claims about what's unfair are just the weak trying to control the strong unfairly. He thinks it's normal for the superior people in society to rule over the inferior people. He thinks that Socrates would understand this if he spent less time on theory and more time on public life. Socrates pushes back, saying that even if it were true that better people should run society, the most important thing is that they can run themselves, or control their hunger. Callicles thinks this is silly because he thinks that a good life is one in which you don't have any control and can do whatever you want. Socrates wants to show Callicles that, on the other hand, a regulated life is always better than one without it. He makes a difference between what's nice and what's good. He shows this by saying that just because someone enjoys something, like a cool drink, it doesn't mean that they are doing well. They could still be dying of thirst. 
The most important thing is to tell the difference between good and bad. In other words, some joys are bad for you, while some pains are good for you. Socrates says that you need to be a worker to know the difference between good and bad joys. This whole talk comes down to the question of what is the best way to live, to be involved in politics or philosophy. Socrates and Callicles both agree that there are ways to please both the body and the soul, with oratory being the best. Most public speakers don't care about making good citizens, they just want to please their listeners and advance their own goals. Socrates says that the soul should be well organized and that a good order, if there were such a thing, would think about the nature of a well-organized soul when making a speech, just like a doctor would think about the body's long-term health when practicing medicine. Callicles says that the best way to avoid being treated unfairly is to gain power in your city. In other words, the most important thing is to live as long as possible at all costs, using things like oratory to stay out of political danger. Socrates says that being good is about more than just staying alive, it's more important to live well in the time you have. He also says that if the goal of politics is to make a city and its people as good as possible, then what a city really needs isn't someone who will flatter people by telling them what they want to hear, but someone who will treat people's hearts by trying to do what's best for them. Socrates agrees with Callicles that Socrates probably wouldn't do well in court. People don't want to hear that a philosopher's hard words were meant to help them, just like a child doesn't want to hear that a doctor's painful treatments were better for them than a baker's sweets. But that's okay, because Socrates doesn't worry about getting a bad verdict in court or anything else that people could do to him. He is only afraid of going to Hades to face the end sentence with a bad soul. Socrates wants Callicles to join him in trying to live the best life possible. He does this by telling Callicles a story from Homer's Odyssey about how souls are judged. So, Callicles won't get to the end of his life with a tainted soul and be unable to protect himself. Socrates sums up his case at the end of the conversation. He says that it's been proven that doing something unfair is worse than having it done to you, that being good is more important than looking good, that discipline is good and praise is bad, and that oratory should only be used to support what's right. If someone wants to be happy in this life and in the afterlife, they should follow the way of philosophy, instead of wasting their time on politics and public speaking. About the author Plato is one of the most important thinkers who ever lived, and his ideas have had an impact on all of Western philosophy since. He was born Aristocles into a wealthy Greek family with two brothers and a sister. It was said that Aristocles' wrestling master, whose name was Plato, which means broad in Greek, gave him the name Plato. Tradition says that when Plato was young, he wanted to be a playwright. However, when he was in his late teens or early twenties, he heard Socrates teaching in the market, and he chose to spend his time studying philosophy. Plato kept learning from Socrates until he was 28 years old, in 399 BCE. When Socrates was put to death for being a bad person, Plato then traveled around the Mediterranean for a while before settling down in Athens to write and start his academy, which was the first university. Aristotle was his most famous student. The academy stayed open until the year 86 BCE. Plato also came up with dialogue, a type of writing in which two or more figures talk to each other in order to solve a problem or find a deep truth. Some of Plato's most well-known dialogues are Euthyphro, Apology, Crito, Mino, Phaedo, The Symposium, and The Republic. He wrote more than 20 dialogues. He was 81 years old when he died. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.